Hey, how's it going everyone? This is YLAM here. In today's video, I want to talk about the output files that we can make with our camera. So this is something that has interested me because the Canon camera, which is right over there, it generates a new file called a HEIF file, H-E-I-F. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it, but it's a high dynamic range image that you can actually just output directly from the camera. It's a very interesting file, but it's something that is kind of disappointing in many ways. And it's something that I want to cover overall in this episode episode. So basically we're going from a JPEG to this HE file for the Canon system. And the way that I would equate this is that we went from JPEGs, which is basically rubbing two sticks together to make an image, to this HE file, which is basically banging two rocks together. In other words, we really haven't moved very far. It's still Stone Age technology with all of the things that we're doing with cloud services, streaming, blockchain. There's just a whole bunch of really interesting ways that we're distributing content right now, but we're really not seeing any underlying support from these camera systems or the camera brands in general. And this is something that they really need to catch up with. What I'm going to do in this episode is that I'm just going to give you a pretty much a big, broad example, and then kind of just loop it back to these technologies, because it's really important that these camera systems support some of these things that are kind of upcoming in terms of technology because I'm just really not seeing it. So imagine that you're using your camera to take pictures at an event. So it could be any camera brand. You're taking your pictures and what you're going to be doing is as you're taking these pictures, you're gonna select a few that you really like. You're just gonna apply a standard picture profile to it and then it's going to stream up to a cloud service in which that cloud service is responsible for distributing it to the platforms that you want or you have contracts with. So. You can go to Instagram, Facebook, some sort of new service, whatever services you've already had ahead of time. Once you upload that file, everything connects up and then all of a sudden your file gets distributed to these platforms in which everybody can start viewing them. And once they become live, what happens is on these platforms, people are going to start viewing them. They might actually start putting comments down on them. And what we're going to see here, because the streaming service is two ways, anytime there's analytics and people viewing them or a comment that gets added, that actually gets uploaded to your file. So your file, even though I'm just calling it a file, is actually very smart. It's going to be able to start updating itself. It's going to be able to understand analytics. It's going to be able to store comments and any type of interactions that's going on with these other platforms. So as you go throughout the day, you'll probably have a collection of say 200 pictures that you want to distribute. So as you work throughout the day, you're probably going to say have 200 pictures that you uploaded. What you're going to do is you're going to come home and you're going to start looking through those 200 files and then you can actually see the analytics to see which one's popular you can select the most popular one it says this one's really popular what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead open it up to my editor i'm going to edit it to the way i want it but instead of just replacing the file what you can do is you can just save another copy to that same file so it understands the concept of different versioning because again it's a very smart file so it says hey here's the original one here's the one that just got updated and edited and any platform that understands that there's multiple copies they can actually just see both copies and people that are fans of that picture can be like Oh, I can see the original that he took live during the event. And here's the one that he edited. And we can have communication between the creator and the people that are consuming your content. And again, all of the analytics, all of the comments, all of that communication gets stored up into that file. In other words, this file acts more like a platform in the way that we think of it right now than just the dumb files that we think right now currently. It's much smarter. And this technology that I'm talking about, even though I'm just naming it a generic file, this is technology that it's up and coming. It's really decentralizing the way we consume content. And that's what I'm kind of talking about. It really gives a lot of power to the content creator, the owner of that file. But let's go ahead and continue on with my example. Now that the owner knows that this particular file is very popular, it might win an award. Again, that could get saved up to that file. What he can do as a creator is that he can hook up his file to a bunch of printing services throughout the world and through the 
magic of cryptocurrency, which is one of the underlying technologies that's allowing all of this stuff to happen. But blockchain is the underlying technology to cryptocurrency. If you have heard of this, definitely look into it because there's some really interesting things coming up with blockchain technology, but that's a different video. Through the magic of cryptocurrency and blockchain, what he can do is he can actually accept the money. And what he can do once he receives the money is that the file will keep the cryptocurrency they can send an order to the printing service. It can actually transform that currency to whatever money that the printing service wants. And that printing service will satisfy the order, send out the print to the customer, and it's pretty much done. This is something that's a little bit different than what we do because usually the owner has to partner up with a printing service and they go straight to the printing service. Whereas with this example, the customer is actually going to the owner and the owner can do the transaction to the printing service, giving the owner more control. This is something that doesn't seem important, but if you actually get down to the nitty gritty, it is very important because ownership of that file and how they want to distribute it, how they actually want to get things done with it is very important. But again, that's a little bit too deep for this video. What I'm really trying to point out in this video is how dumb the content files that we're currently creating with our systems right now and how drastically it needs to improve for the up and coming technologies that are occurring. Now, right now we have Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and they pretty much they have all of the control. You take your content, you upload it to their platforms, and they pretty much figure out how they're going to distribute it to your customers or to your followers. You're really at the mercy of the platforms and how they want to curate all of this content, whereas all the up and coming technology really decentralizes all of that. There's a whole bunch of new platforms that are coming out that are going to be distributed. And what they're wanting to do is they're going to want to connect to other forms of decentralized content, which is something that's going to get created sooner rather than later. And this is something that really all of the camera manufacturers need to get together and try to figure out how this is going to work in the future, because they're definitely going to have to work together on this in order to stay competitive in the content creation arena. It's seems like they're very happy with allowing other people to distribute their content that their cameras are making and that's really not a winning strategy. Now I know I'm talking very broad terms here and there's a lot of underlying technology that still needs to be developed at this point but this is really the point where they really want to get involved and see how they can actually change how their content is getting generated because the technology is at a point where people are receptive to ideas and really want to work with other people on how to make these platforms work in the future. And this is something that pretty much all of the camera manufacturers need to get in on and really have a good collaboration between the platforms of the future and what they're generating in terms of products. We all know that the camera industry is shrinking and the only real way to stop it is we need to expand what a camera can or cannot do. The camera manufacturers should start really thinking about in the products of the future. But anyhow, that's the piece of technology that I want to talk about today. Thank you so much for watching. Definitely let me know in the comments below what you think. I hope you're safe out there and I'll see you in the next video.